bit slower. Hopefully that's okay. Um, sorry, yeah, just something like that. Um, so, so, um, so today, uh, for the next ten or fifteen minutes, I'm going to briefly talk about uh, Southeast Asia uh, startup scene, and um, you know, start, uh, South, uh, sorry, Southeast Asia. I kind of briefly can. Um, we think about um, Guam, Malaysia, Philippines, um, Sydney is also considered Asia as well, um, Vietnam, and so I'll talk a little bit about kind of what we found while we were down there. Okay, so, so I'm a managing director at Zeroth.ai, and we are the first accelerator um, in Asia, um, and actually across the world for artificial intelligence machine learning. Uh, uh, startups, and so we just started it about four weeks ago, um, and we're centered in Hong Kong, and we're looking for ten startups uh, to find. And the program starts in early November. Um, it's fun. I didn't realize the Korean there, so I don't know exactly what that, that's saying, but I assume it's the same thing. Um, so my background before I was at TechStars, before I moved back to Hong Kong about eight months ago. So I helped lead TechStars London. Um, and I was at TechStars New York before coming back uh, to, uh, to Hong Kong and I uh, worked with over 50 uh, companies um, at TechStars who raised collectively over $67 million um, uh, during my, kind of my period. Um, so this is just a little bit more information about Xeroth, $20,000 USD funding and the applications for September 24th. Um, so let me tell you a little bit about what we did for the last two weeks. So in pursuit of trying to f find a lot of artificial intelligence, machine learning startups uh, across Asia, because our particular focus is across Asia and not just a particular country, uh, we spent the last 15 days uh, traveling. Uh, we covered six cities across Southeast Asia, um, including parts of Asia as well. So Ho Chi Minh City, Manila, Bangkok, uh, Beijing, and Sydney. And I've done actually extensive work in Singapore as well, so a pretty good indication of, of, of that particular region. We had over 50 meetings um, during our time there, and we present to over 300 people in, in kind of venues like this. So just, just as a show of hands, like, do most people uh, invest, uh, have people invested in Southeast Asia or, or founded startups in Southeast Asia before? If you have, just raise your hand. Oh, okay, great, fantastic. This is all new information. <laughs> good, good. Um, so people we met, um, so there's a, there's a lot of different people. So we tried to segment uh, the people that we met. Um, in Southeast Asia, there's a lot of um, uh, not just private organizations, but actually a lot of government organizations as well. And so in Korea, there, there's, a, I know, a lot of government organizations that are helping um, uh, startups, and it's almost equally almost so in, um, in Southeast Asia. Uh, some governments are a little bit more aggressive, uh, some, some less aggressive. Um, so we also, so there were, we, we segmented out by private organizations, startups, uh, meetups, and or, uh, governmental organizations. So these are some of the organizations that we've met with. So I'm gonna send out the slides later on. If you, know, you, you want any more information on these different organizations, I'm very happy to kind of talk through what they are. Um, but it really kind of spans the range from the organizations I, I talked about and also VC firms as well. Um, so some of the conclusions that we saw. So uh, the first thing, let's talk about Ho Chi Minh City. Um, Ho Chi Minh City is absolutely fantastic. Um, from a technical perspective, um, uh, from a founder perspective, from a company perspective, uh, the founders in Ho Chi Minh City were absolutely by far the most technical. Um, I, I think there's something about, I think, the mathematical background uh, that a lot of Vietnamese kids have, um, a lot of science background, but because of that, there's a tremendous um, kind of technical chops and technical expertise in, the, in that particular domain. Um, the, what we found is there's not that many startups, but there are a lot of founders. So there's a lot of uh, great uh, outsource developers, there's a lot of developers that are trying different things, but um, the number of companies really isn't that much. So we view it as positive because we can actually work with individuals to form companies. 
Um, but again, the number of companies isn't there, but the number, high number of developers and founders. Um, we also found a very interesting statistic. There's a huge volume of people under the, uh, of young people. So something along the lines of under, over 50% of people are around uh, the age of 35. Um, so again, there's this hunger of entrepreneurship and ambition because of the tremendous youth in, in, in Ho Chi Minh City. Um, and so I also want to make a parallel. So it's not just Ho Chi Minh City, but Hanoi is also a, a city that's tremendously technical. In many ways in Vietnam, Ho Chi Minh City is the more business city, and Hanoi is actually the more technical city. So both of those cities are, are, are fantastic for, are for founders. Another interesting fact about Ho Chi Minh City is the average salary for developers is $700 uh, US dollars per month. 700 US dollars, right? And so the labor cost is extremely cheap, but again, extremely good as well. And, and, and very understanding of English. Um, Kuala Lumpur, so this, uh, this is the second city that we visited. Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. So this is one of the cities that actually has a lot of government support. Um, it's most obvious in a government center called Magic. Uh, so Magic is a huge government center and pretty, uh, pretty close to the airport and all, pretty much all the stars are centered around um, Magic. Um, and so they give a combination of space and funding, uh, 500 startups is also uh, based out of uh, uh, Magic as well. So that's kind of the center of a lot of the entrepreneurship. The quality of ideas that we've seen in, um, in Malaysia probably isn't high, but instead of Vietnam where there's a lot of great founders, there's actually some interesting companies um, in, in Malaysia. So they started they're a little bit more mature, right? So they're companies rather than individuals in what we see in Malaysia. Um, so that's, and then again, there's, there's not just kind of magic the government center, but also some of the funds are government impact as well. But most of the government impact funds are still very traditional funds, uh, um, technology funds, and says they invest in high technology, R&D, health type of uh, startups. So Manila. Um, Manila was out of all the ecosystems that we uh, took a, a, all, a, out of all the ecosystems that we took a look at. This was actually the least technical. So in Manila, I didn't know this before. Before we went there, there's a lot of business process outsourcing. So any type of customer service calls that you that you have when you talk to a bank, most of the English speaking staff in Asia tend to be um, from the Philippines. And so they have a lot of these, uh, they call it BPO business uh, process outsourcing. A lot of these BPO customer service centers over there. So most of the stars that we see are not very technical. And even if they are, they cater to that industry because that industry is something like 20 or 30% of actually uh, of Philippines uh, GDP. And so any stars that we see over there is really doesn't matter with that, whether it's process. So stars that deal with process or chatbots that help um, kind of uh, the interaction between customers and um, the BPO offices. So those tend to be the startups that we, tech, that we, we see. Um, something interesting that someone shared in terms of information was actually e-commerce startups are, um, are quite big in, 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 in the Philippines. And so most people are actually English speaking, most people are starting to get credit cards as well, so there's a lot of consumer behavior in terms of buying stuff online. And so that's something we found pretty interesting. And so for those that are actually have, are helping e-commerce startups, Philippines is actually a pretty interesting space. Mm -hmm. um, Bangkok. So Bangkok is the scene we didn't get to know the best. We actually attended a conference called Tech Sauce over there. Um, but what we do and what I like to share about uh, Bangkok is the fact that Texas is by far the largest kind of uh, startup conference there and it's organized by a co-working space called The Hub. Um, and so The Hub owns, I think, about three or four different co-working spaces in, in Bangkok. Um, the sense that we got when we were there was there really isn't as much companies. There's a lot of people interested in startups, but not really kind of companies per se. I mean, there really wasn't any signal in terms of what industries were interested in, whether it's fintech or whether it's um, uh, SaaS or whether it's consumer. It was all very, very loose um, in, in Bangkok. But again, the government is actually putting a lot of money or starting to put a lot of money in Bangkok as well. Um, but we just want to cover two more cities. Um, I think in Sydney, Sydney is actually the most developed ecosystem that we saw. Uh, Google's largest uh, engineering office outside of the US is actually in Sydney. 
Uh, Zero is based out of Sydney. Um, um, what was that company called? Atlassian is actually uh, based out of Sydney as well. And uh, Campaign Monitor is also based out of Sydney. So there's a lot of tremendous activity in Sydney. A lot of great developers. The valuations are very, very high and the salaries are very high. But the VCs in, in Sydney are one of the more, more sophisticated that we've seen. And that's been incredible. Some of the investors in um, Sydney are actually also investing in autonomous driving. So that's the level, that they see themselves more aligned with the US than they are with Asia. So the, the way they invest and the, the mentality and technology they have is tremendously high as well. Um, Beijing, I want to talk a little bit about it because I think a lot of people probably know a little bit about Beijing. But I mean, for us, um, we really liked Beijing. There was a lot of startups there. But it's very, very hard to penetrate into, into Beijing, much less China. Uh, so we're actually going to go back in about two weeks to go um, through it again. Um, what we found about Beijing, what was surprising, was the valuations are super, super high. Um, in fact, even more expensive than um, valuations in the valley. And so, you know, it's, it's, it's tremendously hard to compete and it's very hard to, um, it's, it's hard to invest in founders because if you don't have the capital, it, it, it's not the easiest, uh, it's extremely competitive. Uh, but, however, so a lot of the founders are really focused on the domestic market. So, like for Korean investors that are interested in bringing startups over to Korea, I think there is a competitive advantage there because most startups are interested in, in, in China only, but increasingly more startups are actually thinking about outside because it's so competitive within China itself. So what we didn't cover was Singapore and Jakarta, and again, I'll talk a little bit about it because I know both pretty well. So Singapore, most of the, most, it's a bubble, it's a huge bubble. So most of the funding is actually government backed or government incentivized. So a lot of startups view Singapore as actually the financing hub. It's probably not the best place for actually developers and hiring developers. It's actually a good place to raise financing, but again, and, and have your um, company based out of there because it's a common law legal system. But in terms of actually hiring, it's actually not a very good place. So a lot of people actually have offices in Malaysia or Indonesia. Um, but the, fine, the, the kind of company headquarters is in Singapore. Jakarta, actually, there's not as much tech, but there's actually a lot of very uh, big kind of e-commerce plays there. So Monksil is very, very active in, uh, in, in Jakarta. Gojack is another startup that's very big, which is like an Uber before uh, motorcycles. And so, and also e-commerce stores are quite big in uh, Jakarta. So if you're, Target, if your startups are targeting actually consumer space, Jakarta is actually a very, Indonesia is actually a very good country because of the large consumer size. Um, so I actually, I, I, had, I sent a later version of this graph. So in the slides I'll send over, I covered the analysis of actually what I think are the startups and, and kind of my assessment of them. So I'll just blow pie, pass this one. So I think one of the, the organizers wanted me to talk a little bit about the current ecosystem and kind of my thoughts from coming outside about what I think about Korea. So I think there's a couple of things. I think one is, I think it's, there's a lot of incredibly interesting startups. I mean, the last couple of days, we saw a lot of uh, machine learning startups, people thinking about AI machine learning, um, and, and, and it rivals, uh, it, it's probably the top, in terms of artificial intelligence, it rivals the top of what we've seen across Asia. It really, really does. In some ways, maybe even more than Beijing, maybe even more than China. But the, but the problem, the challenge that we see is a lot of these startups are actually very insular. They're very focused on Korea, and we haven't really seen a lot of startups come out of Korea or success stories coming out of Korea. And that actually is, is actually, um, that's sad for me because I think there's a lot of really talented developers and companies here. Um, also, sometimes companies are actually tremendously technical, but not very good at explaining exactly what they're doing. What's the a, a customer problem, what's the user problem they're solving. And so I, I find that particular challenge. It's not an English speaking problem, it's more the orientation of, of startups to actually the customer and the user is what we found. Um, and then investors, you know, I think we've talked to, I've talked to a couple people here in the investor ecosystem. I think having more kind of uh, relationships with other investors across the Asian ecosystem is something that we welcome. Because we see, well, I've seen, because I've been here in Korea a lot, I see there's a, like, 
Korean investors are actually very active and very good at what they do. And if we can actually find more like outside investors investing in Korean companies, but Korean investors also looking outside, I think it actually makes for a better ecosystem. So I hope to see more of that activity because I think there's a lot of um, know-how actually that Korean investors can add to the ecosystem across Asia, not to mention also outside in the UK and the US. Um, and I'm over time, but there's a couple of things that I, I was thinking about, maybe a way to kind of improve um, having an English-speaking platform where Korean startups are publicized, something like AngelList. I know B-Success is starting to do something called, uh, uh, gosh, she just told me the name, Brilliant, Brilliant.xyz. So I think more of that kind of publishing platform, some sort of platform, whether it's content or whether it's fundraising about these and celebrating these Korean startups is maybe one way to celebrate that. And then I think gathering investor networks across Asia to share deal flow and best practices is something that needs to be solved. And at Xerox, what we're thinking about is for our demo days, is really involve a lot of investors across Asia, not just one particular region. You know, this is not the only solution, but that's something that we need to think about because, again, there's, there's more that we can do together, and there's a lot more interesting stuff that we can share around the ecosystem if we share deal flow. Um, so that's, that's my email. Um, you know, if there's any questions or you want a presentation or anything, please email me. My cacao is tech low. So there's another point though. The thing is, this is common though. Like in Japan is similar, right? In China is similar because it's such a huge uh, domestic market and, and developed ecosystem that stars tend to be inside. But the ones that are actually global think about being international from day one, right? And I think that's the biggest difference. The startup has to say, look, I want to be international and that's what I'm aiming for right from the start. It's hard to change a little bit later. 어, 네, 그래서 타, 저, 스타트업 같은 경우에는 창업 초기부터, 그러니까 창업 첫날부터 해외를 진출하려는 그런 마음가짐을 가지고 있어야만 해외 진출을 짓고 그 창업 중간 단계에서 이 노선을 전환하는 것은 굉장히 어려울 거라고 생각하신다고 합니다. 그래서 일본과 중국 같이 내수 시장이 충분히 발달되어 있는 큰 내수 시장을 갖고 있는 스타트업들은 한국과 마찬가지로 해외 진출을 조금 더, 어, 좀 고려하지 않는 그런 경향이 있다고 합니다. 두 번째 질문인데요. 동남아와 한국의 창업 환경을 비교해 본다면 특히 규제나 
기업의 지배력 관점에서 어, 이렇게 비교를 해달라고 질문하셨는데요. Okay, so um, when comparing the like startup infrastructures between Southeast Asia and Korea, um, what are the differences in terms of regulations and many mega corporations? Mega corporations like Hyundai, Samsung. Um, in Southeast Asia, a lot of it seems to be government um, government incentives. So um, I'm trying to think. Like very few actually had tax breaks. Most of them actually put a lot of money into the ecosystem. In terms of regulations, no one really. I, I guess there was. I think Malaysia relaxed crowd uh, crowdfunding, but there wasn't really huge change in terms of regulation. It's more putting a lot of incentives and putting a lot more money into it. In terms of corporates. Um, that's true. I think I, I I don't, but I don't think it's the same level as Korea though. I think Korean uh, uh, mega corporations like Samsung, the tables are, are a lot more active in the ecosystem than they are in in, um, in, uh, uh, in Southeast Asia. For example, I was talking to I was uh, talking to Samsung Global Strategy yesterday, and they're actively looking into AI as well. Right? You don't see the same type of activity in Southeast Asia. Okay. Sorry. One more thing. What? Yeah. Sorry. However, having said that, Indonesia, most of the Indonesian funds are actually mega corporates. Oh, 네. 그 동남아 같은 경우에는 규제보다도 세계 생태계에 관한 업무를 많이 해주는데요. 그래서 어, 많은 돈이 창업 생태계에 흘러들어오고 있고, 또 한국처럼 한국만큼 대기업들이 스타트업을 그러니까 스타트업 생태계에 대해서 지배력을 갖거나 영향력을 행사하지 않는다고 합니다. 네, 그래서 어, 삼성전자의 팀을 만나고 했는데. 한국의 대기업, 대기업들이 스타트업 생태계에 훨씬 더큰 영향력을 행사하고 있는 것 같다고 보고 있습니다. 네, 그 탐로님께 감사의 말씀, 네 박수, 네 부탁드립니다. <웃음>